the water quality and riparian buffers has been researched for the last 20 years. What type of understory vegetation we should have, what type of tree species we should have, this information was never existed in the past. Our main findings are that treed buffers are going to give more benefits in terms of carbon storage than grass buffers, and this doesn't come at a cost to functional diversity. So we find that functional diversity is actually higher under the canopy of trees than it is just in a grass buffer. Research that I'm collaborating right now with one of uh, my colleagues at the University of Guelph is really looking at microbial diversity and how that's contributing to ecosystem services, things like carbon storage and nitrogen cycling, mineralization. So I think the new frontier is really going underground, looking at those unseen environments. Apart from just talking about all these interesting results that we have, we want to get to an extent where we can look at the different greenhouse gases the microbial communities that we have, uh, look at the different soil properties within those zones, and then be able to make a decision, well, based on those empirical results. One of the things that we did not get to do very much in our recent research on greenhouse gas emissions is to look at winter greenhouse gas emissions. But what is of interest here is that with climate change, we have more phases of what we call freeze-thaw and also maybe with less snow cover. So less snow cover means less insulation to the soil, but still again, we don't quite know what happens in these freeze-thaw environments and with a more of those events potentially happening, it would be really good to know exactly how that pans out. This research is centered around greenhouse gas emissions and that's critical, but understanding that it's the microbes that are driving those greenhouse gas emissions and thinking about the soil biodiversity and how that links together would be the message that I would want to send. So we are just scratching the surface now. Uh, for example, nitrogen and phosphorus uh, aspects uh, related to in the riparian zone and their influence on, on uh, greenhouse gas emissions is, is one aspect. Uh, microbial communities and especially the microbial communities that are related to nitrogen cycling and their influence on uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, Macrofaunal uh, aspects like earthworms. These are the answers that we are trying to generate so that we can pass it on uh, to, the, to the landowners. Uh, but again, I should warn that this is, we are scratching the surface. That's why we need long-term research. I hope the Agriculture Greenhouse Gas Program will continue to fund agroforestry programs uh, because in four years, you know, you cannot change the world. In, in four years, is, is that we will we will we'll find a path in four years, but then to build the path, we need more research fundings uh, to continue our work.